again, my name is Gabe Zona. This is the 7th of February, 2019. Just read an interesting article posted on the Daily Wire written by Emily Zanotti, that's Z-A-N-O-T-T-I. Title, Chicago Police Superintendent, Empire Star, Jesse Smollett, will be held accountable if he made a false crime report. I actually did videos on exactly that. I believe he just wanted a little bit of attention. Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson reportedly told local media Tuesday that Chicago Police Department will pursue a case against Empire actor Jesse Smollett if it turns out Smollett filed a false police report alleging a late night attack. Here's an embedded video. Smollett was allegedly attacked while walking home from a subway sandwich shop in downtown Chicago. Smollett says that two men approached him, targeted him with both racial and homophobic slurs, tossed a rope around his neck, and then poured an unspecified liquid on him, which may have been bleach. Well, if it was bleach, wouldn't that still have shown up on his skin? Huh? Smollett reported being injured in the attack and later told law enforcement officials that the two attackers yelled, Welcome to Make America Great Again Country, during the incident. This bullshit reminds me of the same crap that went down supposedly in Florida. Huh? You know, with that dude driving around in that Trump bus or van. Absolute bullshit. A subsequent investigation by Chicago police reveals that indeed Smollett did walk several blocks to and from the subway shop that evening, but that Smollett was on camera for all about 60 seconds of his trip, during which Smollett reports the attack took place. That shouldn't be that hard to figure out, should it? I mean, if he was in the camera, except for 60 seconds, they got to know where he was when he reported the attack. Although two individuals were pictured on security cameras near where Somet says he was attacked, sources close to CBD tell the local media that those two individuals appear to be homeless and were in the vicinity between 15 and 30 minutes before Somet arrived back at his apartment on East Water Street, just north of the Chicago River. Chicago police also reportedly dismissed a neighbor's claim that a redneck-looking man was loitering behind Smollett's apartment building, according to Chicago Crime Watch blog, CWB Chicago. The Chicago Sun-Times reported last week that Smollett was reticent to file a police report, but that another individual present in Smollett's apartment encouraged him to call police and to seek medical attention. Somet also refused to provide police with his phone, despite telling law enforcement that he had been on call with his manager at the time of the attack. The developments have led some to question Somet's version of the attack, even though the Empire Star insists that his original version of the events is the correct one, according to the Associated Press. Fox 32 reporter Rafer Wagle reported Tuesday that he spoke to Police Superintendent Johnson and that Johnson told him Somet is still being treated as a victim in his case, but the police are pursuing all angles of the events. Sources close to Chicago Police Department also tell the Daily Wire that police have filed a series of subpoenas in order to compel the production of Somet's phone records from the night of the attack a report apparently confirmed by CWP Chicago. Police are also looking to the source of the rope Slomet says was placed around his neck during the attack. Initially, Slomet said the rope resembled a noose, but upon closer examination, according to the Sun-Times, the rope appeared to be a thin clothesline, which police believe came straight out of the package before it ended up around Slomet's neck. Slomet was still wearing the rope, when police arrived to take his report 45 minutes after the attack. What sense does that make, huh? Huh? <laughs> that he'd be wearing the rope 45 minutes after the attack. Hmm? Investigators are reportedly visiting retail stores looking for surveillance camera footage 
of anyone buying a similar product in the days before the attack. Fox News reporter Matt Finn also says that CPD is getting its ducks in a row for possible interrogation regarding the attack, but Finn did not provide details as to who or what might be interrogated. Hmm. So far the police do not appear to have any suspects or persons of interest in the case, because there aren't any. This jackass was just looking for a little bit of free publicity. You know? <laughs> Guy's a fudge packer, and he's just looking for a little bit of free publicity. I hope that nail is ass. I was going to say black ass, but it doesn't matter. I just hope they nail his ass, as they should, for filing false police reports. It didn't all happen in 60 seconds. It didn't happen, period. That's sort of what I think. Go do a search on the title. Let me know what you think. Thanks for listening.